Hello, my name is Darren Brown. I am a physiotherapist and researcher. Please turn on closed captions to read what I am saying in your language. This video is a short summary of our research study funded by the Canadian Institute of Health Research. This study had two phases, and today we present to you the first phase of this research where we aimed to describe the experiences of disability among people living with long COVID in Canada, Ireland, the United Kingdom, and the United States of America. This study was a qualitative descriptive study involving semi-structured interviews. Our research team included clinicians, academics, and people living with long COVID from these four countries, and our research was conducted with a community-engaged approach with long COVID community groups. Participants included people aged 18 years or older who self-identified as living with long COVID and were recruited with purposive sampling via our community collaborators, which included Long COVID Physio, Patient-Led Research Collaborative, Long COVID Support UK, Long COVID Ireland and COVID Long Haulers Support Group Canada. Our research team intentionally recruited to optimise the diversity of the sample with respect to age, race or ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity and the duration since, since initial presentation of COVID-19. Participants completed semi-structured interviews to explore their experiences of living with long COVID and they were also asked to illustrate their trajectory of health over time when living with long COVID. Participants also received an e-gift card as a token of appreciation. The data was analysed through collaborative group-based qualitative analysis using content analytical techniques. We recruited 40 participants, 10 in each country. The median age of participants was 39 years of age. 73% of the sample had female sex, 63% identified as a woman, 73% were of white ethnicity, 50% were unable to work due to long COVID. 48% had completed university or college education. 83% had been living with long COVID for more than one year. 78% were fully vaccinated with a booster dose. And 93% experienced a relapse in symptoms over time. Disability living with long COVID was described as episodic in nature. And many different descriptors or terms were used to describe the short and long term fluctuations in health and functioning that sometimes happened unpredictably. Participants were clear that the episodic nature of disability was not an all or nothing concept of complete wellness or illness, but was experienced as a continual state of changing presence, severity and duration of episodes over time. Disability was also experienced as multidimensional, presenting with clusters of different types of symptoms and impairments. The invisibility of symptoms and disability made it difficult for participants to articulate their ex experiences and would often result in health challenges being dismissed and not recognised as disability. Participants also expressed how there could be permanent or constant loss of function alongside stable features of disability that coexisted with episodic presentations. Therefore, episodic disability was experienced as a continuum spanning over a long time since infection with SARS-CoV-2 virus, with daily or weekly fluctuations in symptoms and functioning. The disability dimension of uncertainty intersected with the episodic nature of disability, characterised by unpredictability of episodes, their length, severity and triggers. Uncertainty of long COVID over the long term also had broader implications on future health and life decisions, including uncertainty about employment, finances, housing and family planning. Consequently, disability living with long COVID is episodic and multidimensional in nature, characterised by fluctuations in health challenges over time, which may be unpredictable in nature. This research has implications for access to timely clinical assessment and treatments, safe rehabilitation services, models of care, disability justice, employment rights and income support, supporting systems to better recognise the episodic disability and uncertainty associated with long COVID. These results will help inform better understanding of the lived experiences through our community engaged research approach, which can help inform approaches for future healthcare and safe rehabilitation. We want to thank all of the people living with long COVID and community groups who supported and participated in this research. Thank you.
Hi, I wanted to make a video uh, testimony on, wow, it's not a testimony, is it? It's just me talking. I wanted to make a video on how much I enjoy working with Darren Brown and his team. Um, I'm Hannah Wei from the Patient-Led Research Collaborative. I'm a co-founder and also a long COVID patient and a qualitative researcher. Um, Darren's team and my team has been working together for over a year now on the episodic disability study. We have been invited to the table from the beginning to contribute to the study design as well as the hypothesis stage of the study. Um, I would have to say that this has been a breath of fresh air compared to some collaborations that we've had over the past three years. Um, a lot of times we see that patients are invited uh, just as a means of checking off a box. Um, they're invited to a certain time and space within the collaboration. And this has not been the case for us working with Darren. Um, Darren's leadership style is very open. Uh, he is very receptive. And at every stage of the study, we have been invited as equal contributors, as partners, and treated as experts in our own conditions, as well as our uh, career expertise. For myself, I come from a qualitative research background. I also have a computer science degree as well. And so I've been able to contribute a lot of my knowledge and understanding um, to this project, both as a patient, but also as a professional. And that has been a wonderful experience for me. Hi, my name is Margaret O'Hara. I'm a founding trustee of Long Covid Support, which is a charity based in England and Wales, which supports people with long COVID. I have long COVID myself uh, and I've had it episodically uh, over the past three years. Um, I've been working with um, Darren and Kelly on this over the, the whole time of the, um, of the project. I work in um, scientific research myself I'm based in an NHS research department, I'm a scientist, and I also have a professional background in patient involvement in research, so I'm, I'm kind of seeing this from both sides. I'm both a person with long COVID being involved in a study, but I also have a professional view on it. And I think we have seen uh, myself and my fellow volunteers who've been involved in a lot of long COVID research over the past few years, Sometimes it can be a little bit tokenistic. The patient involvement can be a bit of an add-on to the main event. But I have to say, with this study, uh, Darren and Kelly have made sure that we are absolutely integral. For them, inclusion isn't just a buzzword. It's it's how they work. And, you know, it's part, part of the fibre of their being, I would say. Um, because we struggle, myself and the other community members, we do struggle with our illness. It flares up and sometimes you can't make a meeting. But Darren and Kelly have gone out of their way to create new ways as we've gone along, develop ways that we can be properly, integrally involved in this study without um, exacerbating our condition, um, but being respectful of our limitations. It's been an absolute pl pleasure to be involved in this work and um, I'm really proud of the work that we have all produced. Hi, I'm Cathy Thompson and I am a physiotherapist living with Long Covid. I'm a member of Long Covid Physio. I have participated in this research as a person living with Long Covid in a PPI capacity, representing Long Covid Physio as one of the community groups. One of the strengths of this research is how inclusive the approach to PPI has been. I have been a full and equal member of the team and included at every stage of the research. From the beginning, I have been invited to every meeting. I have been involved in discussing recruitment strategies through to reviewing emerging data and the results from the interviews and had the opportunity to contribute to the final research paper and this conference poster and accompanying video. I felt heard. I felt listened to. I felt as if my voice mattered. I saw my views acted on without hesitation. 
I felt valued. But most importantly, this approach has ensured that people with lived experience have been at the very centre of this research and the results truly reflect and represent the long COVID community that I belong to. I believe this has been a shining gold standard example of how research should be carried out in the future with equal partnership between researchers, clinicians and people with lived experience.